Um, by the way, just to look at this, notice that this is just These are, are the same thing. Instead of saying 200, I can say 800 divided by 4. So this just shows us what's the power on that little sliver. Well, the total power on the entire sphere is 800 watts. And this is the fraction of the sphere that the sliver accounts for. Remember, this is the total area of the sphere, 4 pi times d squared, 4 pi r squared. And this is the area that we're actually looking at. So the, there's a simple intuition here. The total power of the wavefront is the same. And then we have to decide what fraction of that total power is spread over this little sliver over here. Okay, so this is an example of how we have to use the same equation twice. All right. And so I also just needed to know that the point source, the, um, the wavefront is this sphere then. Oh yeah, that's another important point, that um, the wavefronts from a point source form spheres. That, that is an important point. Um, it should be kind of intuitive because that seems like a, it should be symmet symmetrical around the point source. It wouldn't be symmetrical to have like a, uh, a box expanding from it, but yeah. Um, the wavefronts from a point source uh, form uh, spheres. That's right. Otherwise, we wouldn't know what area to plug in over here. If you look at the front cover, he actually did give you this in this formula here. But he, instead of putting an area, he'd already, so this is uh, already optimized for a point source. That equation is already optimized. So in the book, this is the formula in the book, too. In the book, they already got this formula, power is intensity over 4 pi r squared, uh, because, and if you look, they'll say that's assuming that you have a point source. If you have a point source, power over area, oops, I read wrong, intensity. Intensity equals power over 4 pi r squared, because 4 pi r squared is the area of the spherical wavefronts from a point source. So this is the intensity, this is the intensity when your distance r from a point source the intensity when your distance are uh, from a point source. And obviously, it gets less and less intense the further you are from the point source, because the energy is being more and more spread out. Okay? And Okay, so this is just a conglomeration of other formulas uh, from the book that you might need here. 
Um, a lot of these formulas can be proved from other formulas, but rather than going through all that, we might just put all this on your cheat sheet. So um, uh, when we did that great big flowchart for intensity and power last time, um, we showed a little bit how intensity relates to fields. In fact, I guess this is the Poynting vector equation right here, right? This is basically just the Poynting vector idea that the S is E times B over mu zero. Um, now, do you know what this bar here stands for? Um, average? Yeah, average. And uh, I shifted back to S for intensity because the book is using S for intensity, but we could use I for intensity either, S or I for intensity. All right, so this is basically the Poynting vector that we went over last time. All right, and then it's not too hard um, to show that, so what do you think EP stands for? Now, P actually stands for peak here, because this is the average and this is the peak. So this is the peak electric field. Why is there a difference between the peak and the average? Well, remember, what is light? It's an electromagnetic wave, and what's waving? The electric fields are oscillating. So the electric field is oscillating from a peak in one direction, then to zero, and then to a peak in the other direction, then to zero, and then to a peak in the first direction again. So the electric field is always oscillating, um, so you, uh, in order to describe it, you could describe it by its average value, or you could describe it by its peak value. Another name for the peak value is the amplitude of the electric field. So this is the amplitude of the electric field. Um, obviously, this will be smaller than the amplitude over here. Okay, so this is for average, and this is for peak. So yeah, these bars over here are important. They're not blemishes on the board. Those are bars. Okay, and this is P. Uh, and then it turns out that you can also write this just in terms of B. In fact, we can just briefly see how to prove that, because do you remember last time we saw the relationship between E and B? We quickly put that in the flowchart. E equals C. Right. Well, uh, notice then if you put in, uh, well, for example, if you put in CB for E over here, you would get this equation. Okay, so these two are just what happens when you substitute out either E or B from this equation over here. But rather than having to do that proof, you might as well just put them all in your cheat sheet, and then you don't have to go back and forth. Okay, so, but obviously since E equals CB, if we know um, either E peak or B peak, we should be able to, to get this. And we can just use these as shortcuts. Does that help us with part B? Okay, well, yeah, so give part B another shot then, and we'll see how far we can get. Do we, get, do we have the material we need now to do this? What do we do first? Give that some thought. So basically, we're kind of trying to get, what was the question asking this for? The what? maximum values of the electric and magnetic fields. So what would be our symbols for that? Um, what are our symbols for the concepts they're asking us for? For electric and magnetic fields, E and B. E and P. E and B. E and B. Because again, now we have to distinguish between um, the average and the peak. So that's the significance of that word maximum. Because we can see we have one formula for averages here and one formula for peaks. So the significance of the maximum is that we're looking for the peaks here. Well, looks like these are the equations that we need. But in order to use these, what do we need to know? Intensity. If we just knew the intensity, we could plug and chug with this formula over here. Well, um, they actually gave you enough information to find the intensity. This is back very similar to part A. So how can we find the intensity at a point 3.5 meters from the source? So S for intensity again, or I. The definition of intensity is power over area. This is a good formula because we know the power. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what would be so plugging So the power there? from the source, or from what we found in A? Uh, yeah, so part B is still about the same source. They said it's the maximum values at a point that's 3.5 meters from the source. So if we were gonna draw a picture, here's our source.
Here's our source. The first question was asking us for the power here, and now this question is asking us for the power, say, here. So we can now we're focusing on this point. It might be more or less than b. So you can use that formula, but in for inserting d, you can put 3.5. That's right. Yeah, so it's always a good idea to keep drawing a picture rather than just doing the math. So this would be a big picture of the relationship between a and b. 